This video is going to review how to use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. Now as a side note, the quadratic formula is going to be a little bit tough as you get started with it until you um, take time to figure out how to really use it effectively. Um, just as a warning, you really only want to use the quadratic formula if something is not factorable. If a quadratic equation is factorable, it's going to be much quicker to factor it and use zero product property instead. Alright, the steps to doing quadratic formula are going to be these. First, Given any quadratic equation, that is anything in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, we're going to start by identifying the a, b, and c values. Now if the equation given was not in standard form, the ax squared plus bx plus c, we're going to rewrite it in that form first. We can't do the values of a, b, and c until we have it in standard form. Once we have the values of a, b, and c, we'll write out the quadratic formula. That formula is x equals negative b over 2a, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, also over 2a. Once we've written the formula, we'll go ahead and substitute in our values for a, b, and c, and then simplify out the problem. We're going to look at two examples in this video. For the first example, we're going to take 2x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals 0. We're going to begin by making sure that the equation is in standard form, and it is. It is given the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can go ahead and identify the values of a, b, and c. All right, to begin, we're going to list those values. This means that a equals, in this case, 2, b equals 4, and c equals negative 1. Once we've written those values, we can go ahead and now write the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, again, is x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, also over 2a. Now that we have the formula, we can go ahead and substitute in our values of a, b, and c. In this case, I get x equals the negative b, or opposite of b, in this case is negative 4, over 2 times a, a was 2, plus or minus the square root of our b was 4, so we're going to put quantity 4 squared, minus 4 times a, a in this case again is 2, and our c was negative 1. All of that is over 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. Okay, we're going to go and simplify. In the first fraction, negative 4 over 2 times 2 would be x equals negative 4 over 4. For the second fraction, we're going to go ahead and work out that radical a little bit. Okay, that means that we're going to take the 4 squared, 4 squared is 16, and then we have a negative 4 times 2, which would be negative 8, and a negative 8 times another negative 1 would be positive 8. So we get the radical, or the square root of 16 plus 8, all over 2 times 2, which is 4. Working it out further, we see that x equals negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 16 plus 8 is 24, again over 4. All right, we need to go ahead and simplify root 24. The square root of 24 is not a perfect square, so instead if we look at the factors, I know that 4 times 6 is 24, and I know that 4 is a perfect square. I can re rewrite it and simplify it as x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 24 can be written as 2 root 6 all over 4. Okay, now that I have that 2 root 6 over 4, I can do a little simplifying. I know that 2 goes into 4 two times. This means my simplified form would be x equals negative 1 plus or minus root 6 over 2. Okay, that's going to be the exact answer for this problem x equals negative 1 plus root 6 over 2, and x equals negative 1 minus root 6 over 2. However, on these problems, you also want to approximate when necessary. If all you have are the exact answers, you want to list those, but you also want to approximate. If I take my calculator and type in x equals negative 1 plus root 6, get out of the radical, and then divide it by 2, I would get about 0.22.
Now I also have another possible answer. If I take negative 1 minus root 6 divided by 2, I would get negative 2.22. These are the two answers that if you were to plug them into the equation would give you an um, outcome of 0. These are the two numbers that when you plug it into the equation would make the equation true. You would get 0 equals 0. Um, these are very useful for solving for the x-intercepts of the equations also, if we had something like y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. All right, the next equation is going to be a little bit tougher. So let's go ahead and look at our second example. For the second example, we're given um, negative 8x minus 7 equals negative 4x squared. Now before we can find the values of a, b, and c, we've got to make sure the equation is in standard form. In this case, it is not the negative 4x squared is on the right hand side. So my first step is going to be ahead, go ahead and rewrite it in standard form by adding 4x squared to both sides. If I rewrite it now, I get 4x squared minus 8x minus 7 equals 0. And this is standard form. It's ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now that I have that, I can identify the values of a, b, and c. In this case, a is going to equal the 4, the b is going to equal the negative 8, and the c is going to equal the negative 7. Now I know that in my values of a, b, and c, I can go and write the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x equals negative b over 2a, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, also over 2a. And then I can substitute in my values. Substituting, I see that x equals the negative b. Well, b is already negative, so I get negative negative 8 all over 2 times a in this case is 4. Plus or minus the square root. The b squared again is negative 8 squared. Minus 4. In this problem, a is 4 and c equals negative 7, all over that 2 times 4. All right, we're going to go ahead and simplify both fractions now. In the first one, the negative negative 8 would become positive 8, and the 2 times 4 on the bottom would also be 8. So we'd get 8 over 8, plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared would be 64, the negative 4 times 4 would be negative 16, but a negative 16 times 7 would be positive 112. So we get plus 112. All over 2 times 4, which is 8. Okay, simplifying that radical a little bit more, and the first fraction a little bit more, we get 8 divided by 8 is 1, plus or minus the square root of 64 plus 112 is going to be 176, and again over 8. All right, the square root of 176 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to have to go through and figure out what perfect squares um, can be used to make that number. And using my calculator and do a little bit of trial and error, I figured that it's 16 times 11. The square root of 16 would be 4, so when I rewrite this problem, I will get x equals 1 plus or minus 4 root 11 over 8. Now again, if you're a little bit confused on where that 4 root 11 came from, it's really... Um, can be considered with a factor tree, where I know that 16 times 11 is 176. 16 is 4 times 4, which tells me that 176 could really be written as 4 squared times 11. And that when I take the square root of 4 squared times 11, the square root of 4 squared is just 4, and then I still have that root 11. So that's where that 4 root 11 came from on the left-hand side there. Okay, simplifying it out a little bit more. Um, the fraction we have 4 root 11 over 8 can be reduced. Um, on the outside numbers, we know that 4 goes into 8 twice, which means I get x equals 1 plus or minus root 11 over 2. And that's going to be the exact answer for this problem. Now, just like in the last one, once I have the exact answer, I'm going to want to approximate. So this is where I'm going to need to grab my calculator and type it in. 1 plus root 11, get outside the radical, and then divide it by 2, would give me about 2.66.
If I then type in 1 minus the root 11 divided by 2, I would get that x in this case now is about negative 0.66. And those would be my two solutions to the problem. Those are the two numbers that when you plug into the equation would give you an equal to 0. These are the ones that would make it uh, true, and later on we're going to find out that these are how we would um, also potentially solve this problem to find the x-intercepts if it was a y equals 4x squared minus 8x minus 7. Alright, I hope this helps you to understand the quadratic formula, and thank you for watching the video.